Just look at that title. Go on. That's the title for part two of this cringe fest. Female Fury's Nasty Woman. You can smell it, can't you? Just mouth-watering cringe. Just mmm, mmm, mmm. Finger looking good. So feminist writer, no, no, propagandist, Cecil Castellucci manages to ruin her own bullshit spin in two issues. I mean, the whole point of this miniseries is to talk about the Me Too narrative. So you would think Castellucci would write the story in a way that would make the main character orally, which I finally figured out how to pronounce, and is probably intentionally named to sound like a sex act, you'd think she'd make her come across as sympathetic. But no. You haven't seen such an insufferable feminist twat since Brie Larson, and like the mediocre Captain Marvel film that critics pretend to like despite the so-called trolls, this book totally fails at the most basic feminist message. It's so bad that even the cringe is embarrassed. Like, oh my god, I've gotta be in this? If you can't tell a believable story about a woman being abused by a man without it sounding like typical missing just drivel, then maybe you shouldn't write the story. You need the audience to care about Orly and to genuinely despise the man abusing her. You can't do that if every male character we see is a walking feminist straw man of men. It's just not realistic at all. And keep in mind, we're supposed to feel sorry for a woman who murders people for a living. That's her job, to go to different planets and torture and kill people. We're supposed to care about this person being sexually violated as she casually kills people, well, males and adult women, she seems to draw the lines at killing little girls. Here we are on Apocalypse and suddenly this world of villains have moral codes and none of them make any sense. So let's get into this book. We pick up the story in this bar called the Fire Pit and Big Barter chastises Orly for causing them to fail the previous mission. The previous mission was for them to capture a girl who ran away from Granny Goodness's orphanage, but Orly let the girl escape when Rublon, Steppenwolf's bastard, asked the girl for a kiss. Orly killed Rublon and buried his body on a comet. So Barter decides to question this move in a public bar where scores of other people can hear them argue. Genius. The rest of Rublon's team shows up and says that they caught the girl, so this was all pointless, and that the first round of booze is on Orly, which makes Barter punch one of the dudes in the face and shout, first round is always on me. Don't forget it. Why are you punching him? What difference does it make who he said would pay for the round? You're just pissy for no reason. I'm assuming there's supposed to be some great I'm a woman hear me roar a moment here, but I just don't get it. She attacked the dude for no reason and then says to Orly, See what you've done to our reputation, Orly? We all suffer if you're weak. What are you talking about? The dude made a stupid comment about buying booze. Nobody said you're weak. Besides, they all supposedly already thought y'all were weak because y'all got the vagina. Wouldn't they suddenly change their minds? I mean, this whole scene makes no sense. Speaking of no sense, here comes the cringe. Orly tells Barta that Willick makes her do things. He tells her that he'll ruin her life on Apocalypse and with the Furies if she doesn't go along with it, and she believes him. And this is Apocalypse. It's literally hell. Bad shit is going to happen to you. Everyone you meet is conniving, selfish, and cruel. You've grown up on this planet. Why are you acting like this is a surprise? Oh fuck, the bad guy's doing bad things to me. Really? 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 Because that's Marta's response. Total denial. She thinks Arlie is making it up to cover up for her weakness. So, Brittany and Jamie, y'all were the editors on this book. When Cecil hands the script to you and you read the part that sounds so unbelievable even Wade Robson wouldn't say it, why didn't you question Cecil about it? Think about what she's asking the reader to believe. She's asking him to believe that a planet full of evil people wouldn't believe that one of the people in power would abuse that power. These are people who destroy whole worlds, enslave entire populations of planets, torture billions of people to death pretty much for their own amusement, but it's just a bridge too far to believe that Willick would get grab happy with Arlie's ass. It sounds like bullshit. So why would you publish this? 
Why not fix the obvious problem of trying to pass off villainous women as totally disbelieving as something they should obviously believe? Just so stupid. Then Willick shows up, and somehow he knows all about Rublon's murder and uses this to get Orly to keep quiet. Why? What she got to lose that she wouldn't lose by disobeying Willick's demands in the first place? Cecil, honey, you didn't think this out, did you? Then we turn the cringe up to 11 for a scene that... Let's just do it. Willick sends Orly a bunch of gifts, and the other Furies, who have to know Willick is banging their leader, get jealous about Orly getting gifts. One of them is like, I can only imagine what you do to get special treatment. She's fucking him. You already know this. In the last issue, y'all were talking about this. Why are you playing ignorant now? And who talks like this? When you know she's being forced to do this because she said it before and said it in the scene, why would you be jealous and spiteful, especially since she gives the gifts away? You literally have no reason to be pissy with her, yet you are. And then you get Barda and Lashina plotting against Orly in this montage of the tamest sexual abuse you have ever seen. Oh fuck, he ate you out, how disgusting. You throw up and take a shower because he went down on you. For real, it's so bad it makes you want to puke. Really? Oh, he licked it. I gotta go take a shower. Meanwhile, Barda brags about how she would excel at whatever Willick threw at her. I'm sure that whatever he's got to throw isn't big enough to please you. I get the point of this ham-fisted scene. We're supposed to show how women don't believe other women. But it ends up undercutting the point because A. You're using villains who know what horrible things Willick will do because they're all evil and like to torture and abuse other people. And B. You're heavily implying that most women don't experience this abuse, so they don't believe it when they hear it. That kind of kills the whole feminist every woman is a victim narrative being pushed by the Me Too movement. Oops. You really didn't think this out, did you, Cecil? So the comic carrying Rublon's body crashes, and Steppenwolf finds out that his bastard is dead. We then hop over the granny goodness analyzing orally, and it turns out she's pregnant. That's why she was throwing up. Granny loses it, saying that she wanted Orly to use protection, and Orly says that Willick forces himself onto her, and the whole thing was an accident. They don't have birth control on Apocalypse? I mean, y'all can travel from planet to planet in spaceships and portals. Y'all got the mother box that can pretty much tell you whatever you need to know. Y'all got all sorts of technological devices, including ones that allow you to splice genes together. But you never figured out how to keep that sperm out the uterus. Really? You can't just take a shot or just snatch that pussy clothes or something? Nothing? I mean, Granny Goodness can remove the embryo from you and use it to splice together some shape-shifting baby, but she can't prevent the pregnancy from ever happening. Cecil, you really, really didn't think this out, did you? We hop back over to Steppenwolf, and he assumes that Himan, one of the new gods from New Genesis, killed his bastard. So he wants to get revenge by killing Himan's daughter and grandkids. And Orly who's an assassin trained to kill anyone on command, is horrified by this. Why? Where is she getting this sudden morality from? Well, it turns out her morality is actually kind of limited. She totally kills Himan's daughter, but she uses a mother box to help the kids escape. How noble. When Orly shows up to home base, Willick says he wants a private dance, and Orly finally decides to kick his armpit, stomach, testicles, and nose. Not the face. I'm making note of that because look at his face. Cecil's telling the artist he's beat up. Fuck up his face. But she didn't hit him in the face. I don't care. Shut up and draw it. Fuck the face up. So of course, they grab Orly and she yells that she'd be applauded for putting him in his place if she were a man. And they're like, but you're not a man. So there. This makes no sense. She's right that pummeling him should get her credit. There's nothing in the history of Apocalypse to suggest that a woman beating up a man of higher status wouldn't get that credit. So this is just Cecil making shit up. It's not in the fourth world as Kirby wrote it. You're just changing the story to fit your narrative. But even in the context of those changes, this makes no sense. She's obviously being used by Willick and fought him off. He's not even hiding it. It makes zero sense that she would be punished for doing this. None. And how do we know? Because in the first issue, Granny Goodness smack talked several dudes, including Darkseid, and lived. Nothing happened to her at all. So what the fuck? The whole thing turns into this ridiculous scene where Steppenwolf says, It looks like your fury's gone feral. Typical of a female. They're unpredictable. Where is this coming from? 
Why would they think like this? And then Willie comes in with this. I saw her dancing. You're a nasty woman. Cecil, is this the best that you can do? At least have him grab her by the pussy when he says it. Jesus, feminists used to be cleverer than this. You're a nasty woman. They call it a cockpit for a reason. You know, you should really build sturdier straw men. They need to last for the whole miniseries. This shit is barely going to make it through a single issue. So then they go to Dark Side to tell, and Willett comes in looking like he actually got beat up in Mega Country. What happened to your face? She never touched your face. Jesse. Jesse. This is what you should have done, bruh. Should have just taken a couple of dick busters to the face. Totally believable then. What's not believable is that Dark Side has a no touch policy. Hey, hey, stop laughing. Stop, stop it. Focus. I know, I know he totally didn't actually rape Granny Goodness in the first issue. I know. We didn't see him literally tell the woman to choose between sex with him and ultimate power or no sex and go back where you came from. He's fucking Granny Goodness, but when confronted with someone doing the exact same thing, Dark Side asked, Did you touch her? What difference does it fucking make? You're Satan incarnate. Why do you care if he fucked her? And then Willett goes, Well, I would never. You know me, Dark Side. And Dark Side is like, I believe him. Why? You know the dude is a stone cold killer and liar like everyone else in your inner circle. Why would you believe him? What reason do you have to take his side? Hell, why do you even care? The only response Darkseid would have would be to say, don't mention this bullshit to me again. And to show how much he's on Willick's side, when Granny Goodness asks to take care of things herself, he agrees. So, Cecil, sweetie, is he against Granny Goodness or not? Either he's trying to undermine her, or she's in his good graces. She keeps saying and doing shit that should get her killed if he's really the sexist pig you want him to be. Instead, every time she wants her way, she gets it, short of the Furies being chosen for missions. This makes no sense. I mean, you really didn't think this out, did you? Goodness goes and gets Arley, who's all, I'm not going to go back with him, and then Goodness takes her back to the Furies, and they're mocking her. She's like, he harassed me. Why don't you believe me? And they're like, you're a crybaby. You're weak. Always looking for attention. Stop lying. And they call me crazy. But you all know he's fucking her. In the first issue, y'all all heard him talking sexually about her. She literally told you what he does. And you questioned what she must be doing to get all that special attention. Meaning you think she's fucking him. So when she confirms it, you call her a liar? Cecil, honey, this makes no sense. You can't have it both ways. The Furies can't be completely oblivious and ignorant to what's obviously happening and then totally suspect she's boning Willick for favors. You have to pick one per Fury. Individual Furies can have different opinions, but the whole lot of them can't keep changing their story. This is supposed to be a serious take on the Me Too movement, not a Michael Jackson accusation. Pick a perspective and stick to it. So this issue wraps up with Granny Goodness bringing in Tigra to see her and giving her rival this spliced together child born in part from Orly's embryo. Goodness wants Tigra to raise the kid. Meanwhile, two of the Furies go and kidnap Beautiful Dreamer, one of the Forever People, because Granny Goodness wants to have a backup plan for her backup plan. And I guess we see all the horrible endings for Granny Goodness and the Furies if she does what she plans to do. If this is what feminists think is a hard-hitting discussion about rape, um... I suggest you go watch Mea Maxima Culpa. That's a hard-hitting discussion about rape of boys by priests, something feminists don't give a fuck about. This series is nothing but lazy propaganda so poorly written it reads like anti-feminist spin. And you know what I love about this miniseries? Nobody's talking about it. Oh, it's supposed to be this hard-hitting look at violence against women and all the horrors women have to suffer? Feminist comic book fans? Crickets. It ain't popping up on the Mary Sue. It ain't popping up on social media. None of these people give a shit. I guess that's because there's nothing to retweet. Make sure to tune in for the next issue though, because it sounds like we're finally going to get to see him on. How much you want to bet he's going to be a rapist or a male feminist? Wait, it's actually redundant. Anyway, you know what I mean. Can't wait to see how she fucks up him on. So make sure your body's ready.